if you get your views from television news you'll only hear stories that corporations choose you'll only get to see what they want you to see you're gonna have to read and decide what you believe we all watched in horror 911 the planes hit the towers and the towers came down did you ever wonder how they fell so fast well maybe that's a question that we're not supposed to ask don't you think it's strange there were no fighter jets did someone give the order not to intercept and if they really scrambled then why'd they fly so slow maybe there's an answer that we don't want to know and where was our president George W that fool he was visiting with children at an elementary school and when he heard the news he didn't seem concerned he just calmly read a picture book while all those people burned The Bushes and Bin Ladens Now what's that all about? While all of us were grounded They flew his family out Osama got his training From the CIA Our soldiers took Afghanistan They let him slip away A new Pearl Harbor was their big chance to launch two wars that they'd planned in advance. Now we know they lied about weapons in Iraq. Did they allow the 9-11 attack? If you get your views from television news, you'll only hear stories that corporations choose. You'll only get to see what they want you to see. You're gonna have to read and decide what you believe. Hi, I'm Bill Olson, the Omega, and we're having another episode of Omega Presents. Now, what I wanted to talk about today, I mean, we have the summary that we were doing last time that we can continue with, and of course we will, but here's some year and a half old information. Go ahead and some, here, I'll hold it up for this camera, and then go ahead and zoom in on that. That's a New York Times CBS uh, 
poll taken October 2006, uh, the question was, when it comes to what they knew prior to September 11, 2001, about possible terrorist attacks against the United States, do you think members of the Bush administration are telling the truth, mostly telling the truth, but hiding something, or are they mostly lying? Well, as you can see there, uh, in 2002, only 21% thought that the government was telling the truth. Well, obviously in four years, people have been waking up and they see that uh, the government doesn't have a lot to say to do with anything with the truth. 16% um, now believe, I mean, that's a year and a half old now, 16% believe that the government was telling the truth. Uh, if you see the 53% and 28% hiding something and mostly lying put together make 81% of our population with a 4% margin of error, 81% mistrust the government explanation if not totally discount it. That means the idea of having debates over whether or not the conspiracy theorists are right or whether the government story is right is you know, it, frankly, the idea of a debate is pretty boring at this point. It's a done deal. We already know for sure that it was an inside job. And we know that we have 80% of us that are not happy with the official explanation. Now, at the very least, we have to have another, uh, a complete investigation with internationally accredited experts and people who are accepted by all people uh, concentrating on the scientific uh, evidence. The problem that we have is that people don't, oh, let me stop here and put, put up the uh, telephone CG and let's get open the line for callers on this subject, but um, we don't need to debate the facts there's it's so much evidence piled up that it, it's not like hey we just discovered this we're talking about evidence that's been around for years and years and years and there's only a tiny percentage of the people that believe the government now so what's holding up our investigation 9-11 um, shocked so many people that they're complacent. Well, I'm getting e emotional here because, you know, how many years do you think you have to keep talking about this? Well, evidently it's going to be for a while longer. If we don't do something to spread the idea that, you know, if you're talking about the government's version, where's the proof? I mean, the government has not offered any evidence to support any of their claims of their official story. They said there were 19 Arab hijackers. Where's the proof? There isn't any proof whatsoever. There's no pictures of these Arabs getting on airplanes. They're not on airplane manifests. It's just our government's word for it that there were Muslims involved at all. And that's how they set this whole fire going. They lied about that. Now, they these... Arabs that might have been involved on the periphery have been shown that there were some that were completely trained and under the control of the CIA and that they're still alive now, so they weren't even involved. Um, how... I, I, I guess what I'm doing here, I'm supposed to be the answer man, right? It's my show. I'm supposed to be able to tell you what we, what we need to do is this. Well, we, I guess we, there is a certain amount of what we need to do. We need to make sure that we put a force to the government in the form of, you know, subpoena power and call these witnesses to testify and clarify their role in 9-11. We have to uh, get answers and force them to put evidence up. The best that they've done for evidence are, the, how about the five frames of the plane that supposedly hit the Pentagon? There isn't an image of an airplane in it. 
out of some 100 to 300 different security cameras at the Pentagon and they can't show us a picture of what they claim happened, if it really happened, show us the picture. Otherwise, let's throw these guys in jail. It's time off with their heads. How about that? All these elite guys that think that the rest of us don't, you know, we can't handle the truth. We're not entitled to the truth. They're so criminally involved that they don't dare reveal the truth. Whatever it is, it's time to stop giving lip service to the government's story at all. From now on, when somebody talks about 9-11 and they're talking about accepting some part of the government's story, you look at them and say, why? Why did you accept the government's story? They offered no proof on any of their contentions. Um, they, they claimed that the airplanes that hit the towers uh, when they couldn't find some airplane parts, why they vaporized, or the, the airplane that crashed in Shanksville vaporized, and the airplane that crashed into the Pentagon vaporized completely. That's why we couldn't find any parts. The, it's time for a scientist to step in and say that's not even physically possible, and time for a historian to step in and say that's never happened before on any airplane crashes in the history of airplane crashes, and then it's time for uh, a chemical or physical materials scientist to step in and tell you titanium can't be melted with anything less than 6,000 degrees and one more historian needs to step in and, or scientist and tell you there was no heat source capable of coming close to that. There should have been two six-ton titanium uh, engines for each of the jets relatively intact. Um, well, I guess the thing to do is to continue going down the fact sheet. We got to like number six or something last time, but it's, it's kind of like those of us in the 9-11 movement who are well steeped in these facts, as I have been for the last seven years, this is going through the motions of something that's just, you know, boring and we begin to feel futile about it. Um, I guess what we need to do, if there's somebody watching this show right now that still thinks there's something about the 9-11 story that the government has put forward that's true, why don't you call me up and try to defend that part of the story that you agree with? If there's any part of the government story, call up and tell me why I should believe it. And I'm more than prepared to tell you why it's bunk. Um, there's a spe you know, the thing that really bothers me uh, as a person with a scientific background, I had to go through high school and some uh, college physics. And we know about flame and metal. And it's ridiculous that the government story that came out at first talking about the fires from the airplanes being even capable of, of weakening the steel in, the, in one of those high-rise structures, it's not possible. They build those out of steel that way because that, make, that makes them fireproof. It, the idea that, oh, we finally had a fire and it fell down, oh, gee, we didn't know. And then the insurance companies go along and say, well, hey, here's our opportunity. These suckers have told this big lie, but it makes it look like all these buildings are just vulnerable to the slightest bit of jet fuel. So we better raise our insurance rates 10 times. And then we'll keep mums the word. If anybody ever wondered why the insurance companies didn't do these investigations like they would on any other possible fraudulent claim, that's why, because they got to raise their rates 2,000%. Buildings in downtown New York that used to pay $125,000 a year, that's a lot of money, but for a big building and all the liability that goes with it, you know, that's, I guess, the cost of doing business. Now it's over a million dollars for the same insurance. And people are either having to pay it or to go without. Um, and as the record profits for the insurance companies show you, they're not going uh, without. <laughs> so. There's not corruption necessarily, but at least, or not complicity, but, it, but some sort of greedy corruption at every level of our society right now that allows this 9-11 story to persist. 
the people that are just raking in the dough hand over fist with the military industrial complex are they're not going to rock the boat and say hey you know as people in the military world we know that the story as told doesn't even match the possible reality um, and that's you know if anybody wondered how come military munitions experts don't come out and testify well they're if they're still in the military they've got gag orders and if they're not in the military uh, well maybe they didn't have I don't know I, I'm just guessing but the over and over again there's an excuse for why people don't do something you know I have some friends that live real well and they don't particularly want to hear anything derogatory about our country you know, it, it isn't even possible that we had a coup d'etat. I mean, that, that doesn't, that's for third world countries. That's what we learn about in history, about violent coup d'etats or whatever. Well, we had a, a violent coup d'etat that killed 3,000 people immediately. And what is it now, 20,000 of the first responders are dead from, you know, lung related things now. And that's the cost of promoting this military war every, i mean people say why did they do the 911 attack and there isn't just any one reason there's so many reasons that they couldn't be all the reasons but yeah everybody that kept his mouth shut or looked the other way or you know didn't speak some oh we have a telephone call but everybody that looked the other way uh was doing it for individual convenience or or profit and it was so much easier than taking individual responsibility. Well, thank you, caller, for saving the rest of us from my continual talk. Go ahead and say something. Oh, well, no, I love your show, and uh, thanks for what you're doing. Um, I wanted to mention something that I've never heard brought up before, and it's the fact that um, if you need <clears throat> police or a response right away, the number that you dial is 9 Nine one one. Nine one one. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. I'm not sure when that was put on all the uh, emergency vehicles. Was that when uh, Grandpa Bush was vice president or president? Oh, I think it was before that, but I'm. I right. Don't know. I'm not exactly sure, but that that shows how these guys are. They had it planned out so far in advance. They were showing off, you know, <laughs> and they were showing all their new recruits. You know, look what's going to happen, and they planned it out so far in advance. But, um, you know, and I've been doing a lot of thinking, you know, America's pastime, baseball. Okay. You know how, how many players are on each team? Nine. Nine. And football? Thirteen. Eleven. Eleven. <laughs> but nine, anyway. eleven. Oh, okay, Foot, baseball, football, nine, eleven. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, well, hey, you know, you can find interesting numerical relationships that really aren't related. They just appear to be or something. Right. Just, it's gee whiz stuff and uh, well, it get, guys, verges on superstition. But, yeah. you know, have you ever folded one of those $20 bills? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you fold it just right and it shows you the two trade center towers in various stages of the collapse, just like the photograph. Yeah, they've got it on the uh, new $10 bill, too. Oh, really? I'll have to try that. Okay, thanks a lot. Hey, thanks for calling. You bet. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Um, oh yeah, I remember uh, the last show we were talking about directed energy weapons and uh, also the no plane theory. Well, here's a, uh, a couple of downloads that I got off the internet. They're compacted by my printing software, but it's 32 pages for this one and 17 pages for this one. And, uh, you know, pretty much with the people that keep promoting those theories about directed energy or the you know no planes hit anything uh, you can just kind of cross those off but I was going to say that if you send me an email I'll be glad to return you the files that I've downloaded here and they're pretty interesting I also have another thing remember I talked about the uh, the God Squad the pastors that were being recruited by FEMA and other organizations to uh, you know, for the purposes of keeping the population in control during martial law. And uh, I went to Alex Jones' website, and he was making the challenge, 
She says, don't take my word for it. Download the stuff. You know, well, I did. Here's the, the, the guideline for the pastors here. And I went through it every word with a fine tooth comb because I don't want to jump on any bandwagon. That's one thing we got to do as people who are the conspiracy nutcases, right? They're going, they, they want to discredit you at a glance if they can. So it's really important that you don't go around promoting nutcase stuff that, you know, you better wear your tinfoil hat or they'll be reading your mind. Take, that's intellectual property stuff, isn't it? Well, we'll talk about that on a different show. No, but I, I went through it and there's only one place in here that, that shows that there's any connection with the pastors and, and the government agency. And this was in Ohio County. Uh, you can't really see this, but uh, the key line in it, there's a little letter here that's describing the uniqueness of the idea of having the pastors in it. And it just says, the membership of the group is being expanded to include several parties that were not involved in prior efforts. In other words, they've never used it, pastors in any emergency management effort before, and now they are. But they don't, they don't, they talk about a bird flu uh, pandemic that they declare martial law for and then need the pastors to keep people in line. And I frankly don't see the sinister connection that Alex Jones did, but there is a, a small connection here, and maybe that's an indication that we could follow up on it and see just how bad that uh, exploitation of, you know, religious influence can be, or is in this country. Um, the, I, I guess the thing is, never just take anybody's word for anything. Use whatever people tell you as a, as kind of like an index or a, a table of contents for something that you, you know, might have interest in checking out later. And uh, like I did with this, it, it wasn't the smoking gun that Alex Jones kept talking about. Uh, it was more like something that I would see any religious you know, organization use as guidelines for teaching their pre priests and pastors and whatnot to, you know, how to deal with crisis. Um, so on the face of it, it's not all that bad, but so that's my first report on that. I don't, you know, I haven't dug any deeper than that into it. But um, we've got a kind of a a shortage of real hard information. What we do know is we we start out in the 9/11 movement by taking the official story and then taking bits and pieces of it and tearing it up or analyzing it deeply to see. And what we found is that, w th in fact, I can't even think of any part of the official story that you could say actually had a ring of truth. And that's a pretty strong statement that not any part of the official story wound up being true. Well, actually, uh, Stephen Jones and his group at the, uh, uh, what, Scholars for Truth and Justice website have put out a paper, I'm shuffling to find it right now, but the it's called 14 points of the official story that we agree with. And there were some remarkable things that were said in the uh, various reports, like NIST was commissioned by the Congress to find out what happened. In, you know, you could argue, well, they were paid all that money, and then they come out and about Building 7, after being questioned that they didn't have anything in their initial report about Building 7, they were asked to do another report. Anyway, the best that they can come up with is, at this point, we have no explanation for the collapse of Building 7. Well, thanks a lot. I could have found that out by not doing anything. <laughs> uh, when official people are you know, entrusted with the public trust and they're supposed to do an investigation, um, they don't have to reinvent the wheel each time. It's not like, well, what do you do to make a good investigation? You don't have to stop and work on that. It's all laid out in documents that, you know, forensic examination of catastrophe sites, the, one of the things that they are required to do 
is to test for the presence of explosives. If you have an arson or a, you know, some terrible, well, like a 9-11 collapse of buildings, don't you think that that's the time that you'd at least test for the residues? And NIST agreed that they didn't test. Uh, FEMA did some analysis and then they didn't follow up. The, the analysis was accurate. It agrees with Stephen Jones' findings about the uh, thermate residue in the uh, dust of the 9-11 event, but they didn't follow up with the, you know, the conclusion that therefore you know, it's a controlled demolition site and not anything to do with airplanes. The airplanes were nothing more than a flash to get your attention, just like a bright, shiny object for, you know, some person that, oh, shiny, oh, yeah. And if I'm insulting anybody out there because you go along with the, the idea that we're somehow threatened by Arabs from the, you know, faraway places, you know, all I want to do is tell you right now, man, you, no matter who you are, have the capability of using your brain, and I tell you to start using it. The idea that you could look at this for seven years and never have a question about it, after everybody has been saying for years that fires don't get hot enough to do that, gravity collapses do not cause tremendous pulverization, those things, you know, you, if you're sitting there and you've heard those things and you don't change your viewpoint, then you are at just as bad as the perpetrators that caused it because you're actively preventing public opinion from pursuing justice. You know, Thomas Aquinas, a 12th century theologian, uh, I'm, he was either quoting or being quoted. I, the important thing was that the quote was, he who does not feel anger when there is just cause for anger, sins. Now, if this isn't a just time, I mean, uh, if there isn't just cause for anger, the way our government's been treating us on this whole subject, I would love, to, you know, the debate between the nutcases, me, and the official story, yeah, I would love to get one of those guys in here who's going to be officially responsible for supporting their viewpoint and start hammering them down. But, you know, that type of debate is, is a waste of time. We already know what the facts are, and if the people on the other side still want to insist that the facts are different, well, they're lying. They're lying or very stupid. Now, that, that might be inflammatory, but People, like I said, everybody has the capability of using your own smarts. Just a rudimentary knowledge of physics. You've heard of the line of least resistance. When you drop something, it, or water flowing or anything, it, it follows the low path, the line of re least resistance. And the path that those all three buildings fell was through their strongest support, the undamaged metal supports on the lower parts of the building, and after the top part was d pulverized, there wasn't any giant weight coming down to crush the bottom part, so the bottom part should have stood even better. And yet, all three buildings collapsed straight down through the line of maximum resistance. That means that that's a violation of the laws of physics without external help. That means that gravity and fire were not responsible for that. There's no possible way. Anybody that thinks there is, is lying to themselves about it, or they refuse to you know, admit the truth. Because you come to that epiphany moment. It really did happen in this country. We really did have a coup d'etat that changed the way our government does things. We are now a, a country of torture after 9-11. And, and well, how do they justify that? Oh, we're fighting Islamo-fascism. That's a stupid term anyway. They know that people react to the word fascism here, so let's use that to brand our enemies. 
and we know that everybody here, for the most part, is Christian, so let's use the emotional hot button of bringing up the Muslim-Christian background of conflict. Uh, and the truth of the matter is that Muslims, Christians, and Jews have lived in peace with each other in the Middle East for centuries. And they're still living together right now relatively in peace. I don't mean Israel and like that. I'm talking about every country has Jews, Christians, and Muslims in communities that interact with each other economically, financially, or the same thing, but also uh, intermarry. You'll find that this line of demarcation that they have of making a, a religious war out of this, that's again for the brain-dead meadow muffins that have to have some answer other than it couldn't have been our government. We're perfectly willing to accept the idea that dictators all over the world are capable of doing the most heinous, terrible things to their own people. But it, that couldn't happen in our country, right? Maybe you should stop and ask, what's the difference between our corrupt politicians and anyone else in the world? So, yeah, okay, I'm getting off on the on my soapbox, and go ahead and call her. Hey, um, on the air? Yeah, you're on the air. All right, well, I just tuned in your program. I've seen programs like yours, but like I said, I've been listening to you about for two minutes. And uh, I'm wondering, is what you're saying basically, uh, do you have the position that no planes hit the towers? No. Okay. Um, the best I'll say on that is that it's very possible that no plane hit the Pentagon. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, that's a common theory. Um, um, well, the one thing, if you've heard about pilots for 9-11 Truth, that's a, a, another organization that uh, started out with commercial pilots look, wow. saying this doesn't wash, and they started examining things. They have this uh, Pandora's Box DVD that you can get, and you can view it online for free pilots for 9 truthorg but what they did is they got the flight data recorder for the uh, plane that supposedly hit the Pentagon and uh, when they analyzed it and it gets me you know if the government's cheating or lying you'd think that they'd at least fake the evidence properly but the evidence the raw data that they gave to the pilots to analyze shows the plane cruising 200 feet above the Pentagon well, that's consistent with a plane flying over and dropping a little cruise missile into it or something, but it's definitely not, con it's, it, the government's own information there is not consistent with its own story. Right, okay. Well, if I'm interested in reading a book about this whole scenario, uh, what's the one single best 9-11, uh, you know, uh, theory book that I can get? Well, okay, there, I have two answers for that. Okay. One is if you're, if you're brand new to it, this is, this is like the, the Bible of 9-11. It's A New Pearl Harbor, David Ray Griffin. And it starts out, and it really, you know, it, it's the, one of the first books to come out, and it covers what, what didn't happen. You know, nobody could say a lot of times what did happen, but they look at the government story, and that's what David Ray Griffin did. And that's a good, good starting point for people who you know, maybe aren't really prepared to understand that our government could do such a thing to us. But here's the one, and, you know, I haven't received any criticism for this yet, and I haven't heard anybody be able to knock it, but Webster Griffin Tarpley, 9-11 Synthetic Terror. This is the one that puts it all together. It puts the background of our wide, wide history, long history of using false flag uh, operations to start wars. And, it, and going back, it wasn't just uh, like Vietnam, the, the phony Gulf of Tonkin thing that never happened. That, that was a false flag operation that LBJ used to start our, uh, he told everybody, oh, we were attacked by Vietnamese PT boats. It never happened. Um, the Northridge document from 1960 shows that the Joint Chiefs of Staff put together a plan of you know, flying an airplane full of students into uh, the international waters for around Cuba and then blowing it up, blame it on Castro and use that for a reason to invade Castro. Everybody signed off on it except Kennedy. Um, um, well, this book will take you through the structure of those black op type things and it'll tell you, you know, basically the things that you always want to. Why are they doing this? Why did they do that? And he puts together a whole bunch of good th 
you know, hypotheses based on the conclusions of evidence. That well, I appreciate the recommendation for the book. That sounds great. Um, going back to your point about no hit, no planes hitting the Pentagon, uh -huh. um, while I might or might not agree with you, what, what do you have to say about witnesses who might have seen the planes heading toward the location? Um, as a matter of fact, the pilots for 9-11 Truth did some interviews uh, of people who were nearby, and they found that the track of the witnesses' planes didn't match the official plane or the uh, flight data recorder information that they got. Um, and there were some witnesses that, that saw a multiple planes. Somebody saw one of those AWAC planes flying around, which means that there was some government command and control station flying, if that's true. Um, but what it boils down to, I think the main things that, that are critical about the, the Pentagon thing is we had that same day that the Pentagon was hit, we had a perfect example, two examples in a row, of what a heavily fueled airplane crashing into something looks like. It has a great big ball of orange fire followed by thick black smoke. And we didn't see that with the little frame, five frames that the government showed what hit the Pentagon. It was a big, bright, highly white flash, not a bright orange flash like, you know, oxygen starved fuel burning, but it was a you white flash like an explosive. Um, so we need more evidence. You know, what we see does not match the official story. It's not enough for us to say, yes, a missile did it. Yes, a plane did it. Yes, it was internal explosives. There's um, witnesses inside the Pentagon that claim that as early as 20 minutes before the attack, they heard explosives at the Pentagon, and, and one guy smelled cordite. He was an explosives guy at the Pentagon, and you don't smell cordite from an airplane crash. So, right, well, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Well, I'm glad you called. These, you know, right. these are all things that don't get talked about too much. I mean, there's so much to it, you, you can't do it all, I guess. All right, thanks a bunch. Keep watching and tell your friends. I will. <laughs> Even right, ones you. that don't, don't agree, have them call up because, really, we'll talk about it. If they think there's something that I'm missing, I want to hear about it, in, in, especially in case I am. What days are you on the air besides today? It's, well, um, today it's live, but Tuesday and Thursday this week will be the reruns. Mm -hmm. um, Tuesday it's at 10 o'clock on Channel 22. Okay. And Thursday it'll be 3 o'clock on Channel 23. And are you are you live anytime soon again? Well, yeah, two weeks from now on the twenty whatever it is the thirty first, I guess is the next live show. Okay, at the same time. The three o'clock on channel eleven. All right, thank you. You bet. All right, bye. My pleasure. And uh, again, I want to point out, you know, when I first started talking about nine eleven, I was in a minority of five percent of the population that thought there was even a possibility of that of the government story being wrong and constantly called a traitor and a, you know, why don't you go join Al-Qaeda? Why don't you move to go support Saddam and stuff? But, you know, a year and a half ago, this, well, I showed you this, this earlier, 80, it adds up 81% are not happy with the official story. That's a, a way majority. Now, you know, we keep going, this is a democracy. Meh, this is a democracy. If it's a democracy, then how come 80% majority can't get a reinvestigation. I think there's a lot of things that we have to admit to ourselves that we had a coup d'etat, we're under an unelected military dictator right now. Um, there's a real big possibility that there's another 9-11 event. I don't know if you've been following this, but in my searches, again, searching for something else and not finding it, but finding lots of interesting stuff along the way, I ran across a Freedom of Information Act release that just got released with, you know, tons of papers and recordings and it's there it's on a couple of websites for anybody to go through and peruse because we need all the people doing that as we can um, and when you find something interesting bring it to everybody's attention well the latest thing was a one-hour audio recording of Rumsfeld in a public uh, meeting or celebration somewhere where they were talking maybe it was a wake, they were talking about how badly the Republicans got trounced in the 2006 election, replaced by Democrats everywhere. And uh, Rumsfeld, you know, without so much as a hesitation or a disqualifying word said, you know, what the Republican Party needs to remain in power is another 9-11 event. 
Now that's not a smoking gun showing that he had anything to do with 9-11. Doesn't even mean that anybody did. But what it means is that there's a high official in our government who didn't even blink twice and thought it was a, you know, a reasonable possibility. That was a good way to stay in power. You know, his mindset is what it shows. And the mindset of these people is that if it doesn't contribute to their well-being, it doesn't matter. And that means 95% of the people in this country don't matter. Uh, I think it would be reasonable to say that if, if anybody really did matter, things would be a lot different. Well, I guess we'll keep going down the list. Oh, yeah, this is a, a real good one. The put options. Everybody hear about the put options before 9-11? That's a dead giveaway about insider pre-knowledge of 9-11 because uh, millions of dollars of millions of dollars of put options were placed uh, through all kinds of banking organizations, I'm not sure, but they, they, they traced it back to a CIA front organization and they stopped the investigation. But, you know, you try making an investigation, or trying to make, not an investigation, try to make an investment in anything. Try to buy some put options and tell them you want to do it anonymously. You don't want to give your name or, no, or anything, you just want to invest. And uh, you'll find that you can't. There, you have to be perfectly on record. So, again, this brings us back to the idea of subpoena power. We need to subpoena the financial records, find out who placed those uh, put option orders, and we'll know an awful lot about who had something to do with 9-11. We find out who, who in the group knew, uh, you know, we can right immediately go to those put options. So. The problem of investigating this isn't really there. The problem is getting it started when the power structure, the way it is right now, they set it up so that in order to investigate 9-11, you have to get the power structure, which is guilty of doing the inside job, to investigate and prosecute itself. Ain't going to happen. That's why we've got worldwide interest in 9-11. The Japanese are running an investigation. Uh, again, I didn't make the list again, but check out on the, you know, websites uh, for Euro, uh, the European 9-11 effort. Uh, it turns out that the world 9-11 truth movement is growing. Uh, it's it's going to be so widespread that if you want, you know, I'd, at least what I'd like to see is politicians don't get elected unless you know they go along with the 9-11 truth movement and reject the official story only only reject it where science tells you to reject it not just because it's there I'm not against the administration within certain limits except for what they're doing you know but what I mean to say is I don't have an axe to grind and I don't care uh, if they weren't guilty, I wouldn't be after them. I might be complaining about politics, but it wouldn't be the life-threatening stuff that's going on now. In the name of greed, what they call fighting terrorism, um, you have to turn off your memory, turn off your mind, and stop thinking. Because you go along with the idea that there are Arabs that are trying to kill us. You know, and they present it as if, oh, poor America, these Arabs are just trying, they hate our way of life. Well, that's hogwash. They hate what we've done to them over and over and over again. You know, and the Iranians are now being, you know, portrayed as the biggest obstacle to peace in the Middle East. But the fact of the matter is, the Iranians never toppled our government and put up a military dictator. Oh, that's right, we did that to them. Oh, well, maybe that's one reason why they don't like us. What do you think? And then we're still running covert ops in their country right now. Maybe that's another reason why they don't like us. What do you think? Oh, we're occupying the Holy Land 
right now for the purpose of maintaining our elite privilege in, in the widespread gluttony of oil. And w what do you know? <laughs> they didn't come over and occupy our lands to take our natural resources, but they're the enemy. They're the big threat to peace, right? We're not occupying their lands, are we? Oh, wait a minute, I forgot. Yeah, we are occupying their lands, and we got... Take a look at the map of all the military bases that we have surrounding the Middle East now. Um, Russia, Vladimir Putin, has you know regained his strength after the Cold War. They're coming back now and asserting their virility. And Putin has told, and have you heard this on the news at all? Putin has told Bush, do not invade Iran. We will attack. Russia will attack you if you invade Iran. You haven't heard anybody talking about that, have you? Well, remember that little thing where Bush came back and said, it was something like nuclear war, World War III? That was his answer to Putin. He said, you keep posturing like that and we'll show you World War III is what Bush said. Well, Bush has totally depleted the strength of our military to where we can't defend ourselves even in Iraq. If Bush asks our military to attack Iran, it will be the end of our military. We will be totally militarily defeated. Our army will be slaughtered. The, the only supply routes to our people in Iraq depend on going a thousand miles along the border of Iran in the, in the Gulf. Uh, pot shot bait for any you know, shore-mounted artillery or aircraft with bombs, and all you have to do is sink one of those big oil freighters in the Gulf, and all of a sudden the world's oil supply is shut off. 27% of the world's oil comes from there, and, uh, well, of course, oil companies are perfectly happy to see all that going on. You want us to close down our more refineries? No problem. We like the price increase that goes with it. But it's... It's absolutely crazy. I, um, I want to throttle people that come up and start telling me about the Arab threat. You know, are you absolutely incredibly stupid? The answer is, yeah, you are. The Arab threat doesn't exist. If, if somebody came here and started to occupy our land, we would be the American threat or the Christian threat, whatever it would be, if they were doing the same thing. And in reality, all we'd be is defending our country against invaders. Anybody would do that. And for us to label them as terrorists because they don't have armies to fight us, in, in the art of war or in other studies of, of warfare, that's called asymmetrical warfare, where an overwhelming force is being resisted by people that basically have no force. It dictates the way you fight. You mu it's called guerrilla warfare. That's the only way a lesser force can resist a greater force. We've set up the situation with our greater force. They're the lesser force. The only choice they have is to do the suicide bombs and you know hit and run attacks. That's the way. The only choice they have. It's not a moral choice of fighting like a man or fighting like a coward. It's fighting for your country against illegal invaders, the Americans. Uh, and you would do the same thing if anybody invaded your country. So think about that the next time you hear somebody talking about Islamo-fascism. You know, fascists started in Italy anyway, and, and in, that's ridiculous. There's no Italian Arabs over there, or whatever you want to call it. But even if you don't lock fascism to Italy, you know, locked into a World War II mindset on the way you look at the world, think of fascism as being the merger of corporate and government interests and what government interests do you see merging with uh, with corporate interests in you know Iraq to form these terrorists I mean there's it's it's a ridiculous term you should you know if somebody talks about Islamofascism you go slap across their face and say don't pull that on me you know you either speak the truth without nonsense or go away you know, but if you're going to repeat the crap without putting your own mind in gear, you're a brain-dead meadow muffin, and you're hurting our country. So you better start thinking and start doing something. And when I say doing something, well, what can I do? 
I'm only one person. Or I work all day and I come home and oh, I just want to sit down and watch a little TV, go back to bed and go back to work the next day. What can I do? Or even if I did something, it wouldn't have any effect. Or on and on and on. And then how about all those at once? Well, get some balls, if you pardon the expression. It's time for you to stand up. We hear about the fighting fathers, for that, or the founding fathers that formed our country. The people that signed the Declaration of Independence, almost without exception, got punished either with death or loss of their fortunes. And, uh, you know, so it wasn't like a frivolous thing to do. They had to seriously believe in what they were doing, and they knew ahead of time that it would probably cost them their livelihood, their well-being, but it was so important that the cost didn't matter. Well, how about now? Is your country worth anything to you? How about the cost? What cost would you put up to keep your country right and just and decent? What, what would you sacrifice? Well, I might not go to Starbucks. No, no. How about losing your job? You, you know, how about getting locked up? Would you do any of that stuff? And if the answer is no, then quit bragging about being some kind of a patriot, because all you are is a freeloader. If you don't think enough about your country, you're talking about, I love my country. Or some people say, I love my flag. Well, uh, you know, it isn't enough to love it. You have to actually do something that benefits it, that supports it, that keeps it true, keeps it honest. And as long as you look the other way while we're killing people or locking people up without cause, or torturing, or bombing people instead of negotiating, or pretending that they did something wrong while the whole time we're there to manipulate power and wealth. Um, quite frankly, your morals aren't worth spit if you let that go on without complaining, and continually complain. I've had signs on the side of my house that people see when they drive by that say 9-11 was an inside job. In the beginning when I put those signs up, it was a big risk. People were throwing rocks at my windows and I just put in brand new windows. It would have cost me a fortune if they'd been smashed. But luckily I lucked out. And sp but the thing that really saved me from, you know, suffering at the hands of the public, in you know, intolerance uh, is that the 9-11 truth movement really did its job it really started picking apart the 9-11 official story to show how false it was. And then the things that we found out that, you know, absolutely preclude the, the idea that we were attacked by Arabs from somewhere. That isn't what brought those buildings down. They were explosives planted in it weeks, maybe months, maybe years before the event. And that means that it was deliberate, premeditated, murder. Now people get upset over one murder. One little child gets murdered or abducted and the whole country goes on yellow alert, everybody talking about it with the, you know, to the exclusion of all other news. How about if it's, you know, thousands of people, 10,000, 20,000, now let's add in the innocent Iraqi victims, over a million and a half of which, like 500,000 to 700,000 were children under the age of 12. Yeah, Islamo-fascists. Was that collateral damage? We are fighting the fascists, but yeah, a million innocent people got killed in the meantime. Well, you know what that tells me? That tells me the military is completely incompetent. They haven't a you know, and I'm not knocking the military, I'm just saying if you, if you want me to buy the story, then the only explanation that explains how that could be, that we're killing a million and a half innocent people while we're trying to do something good for the country, if, if you believe that crap, how is it possible to, to accept that story without coming to the conclusion, well then our military is absolutely incompetent. And if it's not incompetent, that means they did it on purpose. Up, oh, we're in that gray zone again. Our country can do no wrong. Other countries have militaries that do that. Look at the, the military that's preventing emergency supplies from reaching the earthquake victims, or the cyclone victim, I mean. 
Uh, that couldn't happen here, could it? <laughs> How about FEMA? Remember FEMA that withheld donated oil during Katrina? They withheld ships of food from our own people during Katrina. That couldn't happen anywhere else, right? No. I mean, it, it only happens other places is what you think. Nope. It happens right here in the good old USA. And it's time for people to stop that naive going about your business purposely ignoring anything that has anything to do with reality. Turn on the evening news and see how many times they tell you what the temperature is going to be tomorrow. Or, you know, then they'll go to a fluff thing about somebody who's, you know, performing, I don't know, at the, nothing of consequence. And then you go to bed and do it again the next day. In the meantime, we're wholesale slaughtering more and more people. And if you hear any news about it at all, they were insurgents. Insurgents? That's another word for people desperately fighting to kick people out of their land. Well, we're coming to the end of another show, and uh, I'd like to make an announcement. It's not for sure yet, although I, I contacted Stephen Jones, the man who just discovered the unreacted thermate in the residue of the 9-11 buildings. Uh, I, w I just contacted him to see if I could get a high quality video of his report. He's, he said he's going to be turning in a, uh, uh, they're going to be publishing a peer review paper on the subject and he didn't want to comment much about it until that's done. And uh, he agreed to give me an interview sometime in June. So keep, keep your uh, TV set warmed up. Stephen Jones will, you know, He's got the latest information on the scientific evidence that, bingo, absolutely takes away the speculation. There is no speculation about it being an inside job now. Absolutely, it's a conclusion of scientific evidence. And the evidence is not just gathered by 9-11 conspiracy nuts. We're talking about evidence that FEMA already published in their report. I'll, I'm happy... To, we don't even need another analysis unless you want to verify that the FEMA analysis was right. But we do want to put a conclusion on their analysis to show you, well, what does it mean when you have that chemical signature? One minute to go, and we're going to head on out. Uh, we don't have a, a lot in the way of uh, information to give you, but my email is 251omega at comcast.net. And if you send me an email, I'll be glad to send you the files of some of these things that the overwhelming implausibility of using directed energy beams to demolish the World Trade Center, a critical review of the World Trade Center node plane theories, and there's my email. Duck from it. See you next Saturday, and uh, if you have any ideas for the show, contact me with that email, too. And if you'd like to be on the show, make a presentation, pro or con, contact me. Uh, it's one of the more popular, in spite of all the seat of the pants of this show, this is one of the more popular shows. So let's keep making it popular. Tune in next two weeks from today at 3 p.m. And bye.